Let's talk to Mark Oswald. He's a strategist at EDMISI. Very good morning to you, young Mark. Good morning. Right, let's talk GDP data. That's due out in the UK and the US today. Um, you're the economics man. With all the revisions that invariably happen, and lots of people are critical of GDP and how it should be, the numbers, how they should be made up. And I remember reading in the FT recently that, you know, it's outdated. Is this still a big number that we should all recognise? And accept? Well, um, whether we accept it or not, it is the only number that we have until someone comes up with a better measure, whether it's something more along the lines of the Indian gross value added, uh, whether it's along the lines of GDP per capita. Um, this is the one that we've got. This is the one that we react to. This is the one that forms our thoughts about uh, what's going on in the world in terms of growth, however imperfect it is. So we've um, had the UK GDP data turned out to, uh, to be somewhat better than expected, 0.5% quarter on quarter, 1.5% year on year. It's certainly decelerating, um, uh, though not hugely when one looks at 2017 as a whole. Uh, it was 1.8 versus 1.9 the year before. But the UK is clearly not um, benefiting nearly as much um, um, as the other economies in the world, particularly notably uh, Europe and the United States are doing very, very well. Um, in terms of likely revisions, we do, you know, this was paced as ever by the services sector that put in a solid 0.6% quarter on quarter performance, which is encouraging. Um, <clears throat> however, we do have a, um, a potential for some downside revisions because what we don't have included in the data or will not be fully captured is obviously the 40s pipeline outage, which does have a very, because the, the uh, mining sector, extraction sector, is fairly substantial, it will have a potentially, uh, the potential to revise it down very modestly. But that's a special factor. Right. So um, overall, I think really the simple story is the UK economy is trundling along okay. There are threats to it going forward. I'd be rather less worried in many senses uh, about the Brexit negotiations in the short term than I would about a collapse of the government, as there seems to be some restive forces on the back, back benches. Yep. Um, and uh, the prospect of a Labour government really, or perhaps another hung parliament where it would be more difficult perhaps to form a government. Um, and the idea of a grand coalition in the UK obviously is not something which we look forward to. But um, <clears throat> moving on to the US, I think that the key point with the US as with the UK is the forecasts to me look all very, very underclubbed. Um, there are a couple of wild cards which I'll come to in a moment, but the consensus is looking for a very solid 3% quarter on quarter, uh, seasonally adjusted annualized rate. Um, that would give us a year on year rate of 2.3. Not spectacular, but largely dragged down by the fact that we had a very weak first quarter last year and still puts us on course to head for about 3% this year. However, um, all the regional Fed now cast of GDP are much higher. Uh, the lowest one is St. Louis 3.4, uh, next is Atlanta 3.47, the next up from that is New York at almost 3.9%. So the risks are all on the upside on this one without a shadow of a doubt. And that should have a few people scratching their heads in respect of, do we really want the dollar as weak as it is? I you know, will come to um, what's been said this week. Um, the, the, the wild cards in this is we know that personal consumption is going to be very strong. That's forecast at 3.7. We know residential construction is going to be very strong, even if we have to acknowledge the fact that part of that is post-hurricane reconstruction. We know that business investment overall is going to be very strong. We know that both in terms of investment in equipment and in structures. Uh, what we don't know is how much of a drag trade is going to be. Um, that's largely a function of higher oil prices and the fact that the US obviously has this very large problem, um, which is worth noting just in passing, the US should actually be benefiting a lot more from the boom in shale production. Yep. However, it doesn't actually have uh, sufficient capacity to process it right. all. So for a lot, a lot of the time, it's still pro um, importing a lot of oil product, which um, if Mr. Trump's going to do something sensible, he should give some incentives to actually build up more processing capacity right. okay. so the US can be more independent. Um, the other one is going to be inventories. <clears throat> That's uh, really more sort of like a correction 
to what happened in the last quarter. Last quarter, 0.79 contribution to GDP. It could be as much as that in terms of a deduction this time. Now, the key point there, obviously, is um, if we get, say, a number around 3.5% um, and, say, inventories deduct half, you're almost looking at GDP X inventories of 4%. Now, that's a very, very solid growth rate, very solid momentum going into um, uh, 2018, and indicative of, with probably a bit of help from some of the money which is going to be repatriated as a result of the tax reform, of a pretty bright, bright outlook for uh, 2018 for the US economy, which is good for the US and yep. good for the rest of the world. Absolutely. Mark, thank you very much indeed. Thank <laughs> you.